Veteran reporter Gerard Ryle is a director at the ICIJ, where he led the worldwide team of journalists who broke the Pandora Papers story. He joins me now from Washington. Gerard, welcome to the program. So clearly this bombshell reporting has led to reverberations around the world. We see the statement from the government in Jordan. But let me ask you to break it down for our audience who, you know, banks at their neighborhood bank has one bank account and, and that's that and doesn't understand what this this investigation reveals. Can you break it down for us, for us and them? Well, we're talking about 11 or almost 12 million documents from the, um, basically from people who set up accounts and offshore tax havens. If you go offshore in this way, you're effectively operating outside the normal parameters of, of finance. You can basically play in a parallel universe. Um, and what we're seeing here, and, and we've been working with 600 journalists from um, more than 100 different countries, 150 different media organizations, including the Frontline and the Washington Post here in the U.S. And we've basically been uncovered the secrets of people who are in power, basically the people who have been saying for years that this is a system that doesn't really serve any real true purpose. And, and yet effectively here we are seeing that they themselves are benefiting from it. Yeah, you've uncovered the files of, we're talking about 12 million financial files of more than 330 politicians from 90 countries. And this should all be said is legal. How, how is this legal and how have they been able to take advantage of these loopholes? Well, if you go offshore, you can basically set up a company that would allow you to operate almost entirely in secret, unless, of course, something like this happens and journalists get a hold of the information. And what we're seeing here are really the secrets of these powerful people from all of these different countries. Um, it may be legal. Um, when we first um, published a, a previous investigation called the Panama Papers, people were saying at the time that was all legal. And of course, uh, since then, more than 1.4 billion dollars in, in back taxes have been recovered and a lot of people have gone to jail as a result of that. I think time will tell whether or not everything we're seeing here is legal, but I guess um, from now what we're seeing is uh, certainly questions been asked. Yeah, and, and for those watching at home, I'm sure many can remember that, that investigation of the Panama Papers back in 2016, and that was jaw-dropping in and of itself. And what's interesting to read in this new report is that um, lessons were definitely learned from the Panama Papers, but perhaps not necessarily the right lessons, because many of these individuals and those who are aiding them, including lawyers, just double down in making it that much more difficult to, to follow the money, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, it's probably worth pointing out that the Panama Papers was based on just one offshore service provider in Panama, which is what led to the names. Here we're looking at 14 different service providers in multiple jurisdictions around the world. And uh, what we're seeing here is after the Panama Papers, they just got more sophisticated about how they hide their assets and how they do business. And we're seeing some sort of hilarious conversations about how they don't want another Panama Papers to happen. And yet here we have the Pandora Papers, which is, as I say, much bigger. So this is all salacious, and, and we're going to get into some of the specifics in a moment. But can you explain why, in your opinion, this is not only harmful to the world, but, but is something that viewers should be aware of? Well, I, I guess the most important thing for average person is that you cannot do this. If you're um, a, an ordinary person, you're not going to have the resources or the, the sophistication to be able to do this. And yet these powerful people who, you know, one of the, probably the most important things that has come out of it is the hypocrisy of these people. They have been saying for years that this is something that shouldn't be happening. And, and our reporting reports their words at the time and now what we're seeing in the documents. So I guess the um, most important thing here is the hypocrisy of our leaders.